This topic is on solving radical equations. So let's look at the top. It has the steps for solving an equation that has radicals, which is what a radical equation is. First it says isolate the radical. Very important step. Once you isolate the radical, you apply the power rule, which means if it's a square root, you square both sides. If it's a cube root, you cube both sides, etc. And then you solve the equation that results. Finally, and this is critical, you have to check all the proposed solutions in the original equation. It's not just a good suggestion. It's something that you have to do because when you raise um, an equation to a power, sometimes you introduce solutions that don't work. So you're going to see an example of that. So let's take a look at this first one. Is the radical isolated? Yes, it is. It's a square root, so the power that I raise it to is the second power, and I have to do that on both sides. Remember that a square root and something squared are inverse operations, and they undo each other. So this squaring undoes the square root, and I'm just left with 3x plus 4 equals Square this side and I have 64. Now what's left is just a linear equation in one variable. So all I have to do is get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other side. So I do that by subtracting the 4. I get 3x equals 60. Divide both sides by 3 and we get x equals 20. Normally we would be finished, but because we squared both sides, we are required to check the answer. So we're going to check 20 in the original equation before we squared. So it would be square root of 3, take out the x, put in a 20, plus 4, is that equal to 8? Is the square root of 64 8? Yes it is, so x is our solution. That was a very simple one. Let's look at another one. Again, first step, is the radical isolated? No, it's not because I have a plus 3 here. So in order to isolate that radical, I'm going to subtract a 3 from both sides. That gives me square root of 5x minus 1 equals negative 3. Now we're going to square both sides, notice that included the negative, getting squared here. The square root of 5x minus 1 all squared is just 5x minus 1 equals 9. Add a 1 to both sides, I get 5x equals 10. Divide by 5 and I get x equals 2, maybe. So again, we're going to check our solution in the original equation. So that would be the square root of 5, take out the x, put in a 2, minus 1, plus 3. Does that equal 0? Is the square root of 9 plus 3 equal to 0? Is 3 plus 3 equal to 0? No, it's not. So our solution, even though we did the algebra correctly, the solution doesn't work. So the answer to this problem is no solution or the empty set. There is no solution to that problem. You can show that with that. That doesn't mean zero. It means no solution. So that can happen when you square or raise to a third power or whatever. When you raise to a power, both sides of an equation, you can get something that doesn't work. All right, let's look at example three. The radical's isolated, so I'm ready to square both sides. Square root of 4 minus x squared is 4 minus x. Now, very carefully on this side, it's x plus 2 times x plus 2 foiled out. And what you do is you get x squared plus 4x plus 4. Don't just think that that is x squared plus 4 because it isn't. Go up there and foil it out. If you have to pause the video for a minute, do that. But I want you to see that you get a trinomial. Now, you'll notice that I have a squared term here. 
I have a quadratic. And the only way we know at this point to solve a quadratic is to get it equal to zero and factor. So I'm going to add an x to both sides. That gives me 4 equals x squared plus 5x plus 4. I'm going to subtract a 4 from both sides and I have 0 equals x squared plus 5x and that's it. We're now going to use the zero factor property. It's already equal to zero. I'm going to factor it by factoring out a GCF of x. And now I apply the property by saying either x equals zero or x plus five equals zero. I subtract a five from both sides and I get or x equals negative 5. Now I notice I'm not boxing those and showing those as my answer. I now have to check both of them. So let's check the 0. And by the way, when you get two answers, one of them will work for sure and possibly both of them. You won't have a situation where neither one of them work unless you did the algebra incorrectly. So let's check 0 in the original equation is the square root of 4 minus 0 equal to 0 plus 2? Is the square root of 4 2, meaning the principal root of 4? Yes, it is. So I know here is an answer. Now let's check the other one. I'm going to check negative 5, being very careful with signs. Is the square root of 4 minus negative 5 equal to negative 5 plus 2? Is the principal root of 9 negative 3? No, it's not. This doesn't work, so I discard that solution. And x equals 0 is the only solution that works. Okay, let's try another one. The radical is isolated. It's a square root, so I'm going to square both sides. This side, I'm left with the radicand. On this side, if you FOIL that out, x minus 1 times x minus 1, you get x squared minus 2x plus 1. I'm going to, I see squared, I see quadratic, so I'm going to get it equal to 0. But all of a sudden, the first x squareds go away, and now it doesn't appear to be quadratic any longer. So now I'm going to get the x's on one side and the numbers on the other. So my x squared terms just disappeared. So 9 equals 2x plus 1, subtract a 1, 2x equals 8, divide by 2, and I get x equals 4. But we have to check it. And I am going to check it on another sheet of paper because we don't have space right here. So let's check it. I'm going to kind of lay this, see if I can get it, you can see it. Yeah, we'll lay it side by side and we'll check it. So that would mean the square root of, take out the x, put in the 4, so 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 9, is that equal to 4 minus 1? I put the 4 in for every 1 of the x's. So is the square root of 16 minus 16 plus 9 equal to 3? Is the square root of 9 3? Yes it is, so my 4 does check. So let's remember that when solving a radical equation, isolate the radical, square both sides if it's a square root, cube both sides if it's a cube root, Solve the equation that you have that you get when you're finished raising it to a power and then always 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 check your answer to see if it's extraneous. Let's use that um, same idea and and solve some specified variable type equations. So here I have the equation x equals square root of y plus 2 over a and I want to solve for a. So two things to keep in mind when you are solving these literal equations. One, you want to get rid of fractions by multiplying by LCDs. And two, you have to get rid of 
radical signs. So let's first get rid of this radical sign and the way to do that is to square both sides. That will undo the radical sign. That gives me x squared equals y plus 2 over a. So I got rid of the radical sign. Now I need to get rid of the fraction and I do that by multiplying both sides of my equation by a which causes that to cross cancel. I have ax squared equals y plus 2. Now let's find the variable that we are looking for. We're looking for a. Here it is. So the only thing left to do is divide by its coefficient. And I get a equals y plus 2 over x squared. Let's try another one. I'm looking for c. Here it is under the radical. We're going to first get rid of the radical by squaring v squared equals cm over d. Now we're going to get rid of the fraction by multiplying by the denominator and I get dv squared equals cm. Here is the letter that we are looking for. The c is the variable. So I'm going to divide by its coefficient, which is m, and I get c equals d v squared over m. Now there, we don't have to check these even though we square because they're not numeric. They're just literal equations.